Body modifications can be seen in many cultures for a vast amount of reasons. In our society, braces, piercings, tattoos, and plastic surgery are seen as the norm. In comparison, we may define another culture's modifications as extreme. For example, African tribes scar and mutilate their bodies as common practice. So what is the reasoning and justification behind this seemingly wild tradition? Philippe's scars have initiated him as a child of the Bessaribi. Once these children enter into adulthood, the small, intricate scars are carved into their abdomen to signify the coming of age. Furthermore, scarification serves as an emblem of strength, fortitude, and courage of both men and women. Ritual scarification is the scarring of the skin by cutting, burning, or making a deep incision wound and allowing it to... Loves many different things. Among infants, scarring is used as a protection method to protect the infant as they grow into adulthood. Among women, scarring is used to show their beauty and express, express their identity. It also signifies when a woman is ready for womanhood and ready to start a family. Scarration is achieved by cutting, burning, whipping, but is mainly done with a red hot knife to the body, creating permanently raised scars. Scarring also shows a tribe's heritage. While during the process of scarring, the tribe member is not supposed to cry. It shows a sign of weakness throughout the process. The ability to handle the pain shows courage, the ability to deal with childbirth, and keeps the tribe member from losing face within the community. Scarring has been practiced for centuries. There have been ancient statues discovered with visual signs of scarring engraved on their figures. These scars are used to identify members of different tribes. Each scarring pattern for each tribe is unique and distinct in its own right. Some of the reasons that scarification is still used today is for social and cultural acceptance throughout different tribes. When a young woman hits puberty and is ready to marry, these scars help her to become more attractive to the men in the tribe. Potential suitor claims that the scar patterns are beautiful to look at and to touch. Some may also see women who are willing to undergo the pain and suffering of this practice to be fit and strong enough to undergo the pains of childbirth. According to this National Geographic documentary in Benin, West Africa, scars are carved into the faces of children to signify the beginning of childhood. The child is ready once weaned from the mother, as young as two years old. As documented, the mothers of these children believe the scarification of the child will please their ancestors and protect the children from harm. Hey, the With the village elders looking on, the blacksmith spends some 30 minutes etching designs into the boy's face. Within each tribe, the changes symbolize different things. The tribe you're born into is more like an extended family. With that comes the responsibility of certain practices and traditions. Some occur at birth, while most occur as a rite of passage into adulthood. Childhood, mutilation is a common practice among African tribes. Women of one tribe wear brass rings around their necks, adding more rings every four to five years. As a result, their necks appear elongated, much like that of a giraffe. By adulthood, the rings can weigh up to 22 pounds. The modification is done solely for the purpose of beauty, even though the woman can experience pain and discomfort every single day. Much like the elongated necks, this is seen as a sign of beauty. It is also seen as an indicator of class. The larger the piercings and plates, the higher up the social chain you are assumed to be. Body piercing is the practice of puncturing or cutting a part of the human body, creating an opening in which jewelry may be worn. In some African cultures, the significance of the size of the piercing is directly associated with the wealth of the individual. During a marriage, the husband gives the jewelry to the wife, and upon a divorce, the piercing serves as financial security for the woman. Body piercings can be done in numerous locations, including the lips, ears, septum, other parts of the nose, and many other locations on the body. Piercings are also performed for cultural and religious purposes. Body piercings are seen to enhance the beauty of the man or the woman. 
Lastly, much like art culture engaged ears, sometimes take this concept to a whole new level. Ear and lip stretching is a form of body piercing, but unlike the traditional piercing where jewelry is merely set in the opening, stretching of the ear or lip is gradually increased with each year and larger plates are inserted. These plates are usually made of clay, wood, stone, bone, or metal. This tradition of African tribes is slowly coming to an end in the 20th century. The Surma and Mercy people in Ethiopia still make use of this practice, however the girls of Mercy are deciding whether they want to wear lip plates or not. According to the Encyclopedia of Body Adornment, lip plates are usually no longer than 3 centimeters in width, but the women in southern Chad wear extremely large plates, often as large as 24 centimeters. Also, the plates are worn by women for decoration purposes and, much like the standard body piercing, the sizes are important for social status. Jewelry has been used over the ages in different cultures to attract mates. Colorful beads and hair, clothes and other accessories are used. Jewelry is not only used to beautify and protect against evil spirits, but rare items such as Quran and cowrie shells are added to jewelry for the wealthiest of tribes. Some tribes only allow the royalty to wear beads. Another form that African women and men cosmetically used to alter their appearance is body painting. Beber women in Northern Africa, they paint their hands, their feet and their faces with henna designs for the wedding. Specific colors indicate certain periods in a person's life, puberty, courting, marriage. Nuba men 17 to 30 use body paint on a daily basis to indicate age. Oil, fruit, clay, Talk and ash are used to make different colors and texture. In another part of Africa, mothers take it upon themselves to participate in what is called breast ironing. This is when a stick or stone is heated up by a fire and pressed against a girl's breasts in hopes of flattening them. This is done to prolong the appearance of womanhood, saving the girls from potential rapists, and allows the girls to avoid finding a suitor and raising a family, thus letting them stay in school for longer. Even though this painful process is done every single day for three months, it is seen as a mother protecting her family. This value is instilled in the child, who may then pass it down to her daughters. At this community gathering, organized by Somali Women's Affairs Office and UNICEF, religious leaders speak openly about the harm of the old tradition. It will be up to the communities themselves to reach consensus on the harm being inflicted to their daughters and make the collective decision to abandon the practice. They are proud of their heritage and tribal history, which is something to be admired. However, with this being said, many of the tribes that practice these procedures are coming from undeveloped countries and their people are uneducated about the risks that they take performing them.
opening in hopes of oh, opening the fire. Hoping the fuck opening. Why do I keep on saying that? <laughs> I already started it. I am serious. I don't know how to not be serious. Tutor immediately in order to hope and in order to raise a family. Beauty. Is it also seen that it is mm. Is it also? Even though this mom is 